Welcome to my home office, AP students, here in my basement. Uh, I guess this is the way we're doing things for a while. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are reading and, and watching, but I definitely wanted to provide you something and, and give you any kind of commentary and, and, and literature for you in this very different time for us. Um, if you notice I'm wearing the same clothes in more than one video, go ahead and assume that I filmed two videos at once and not that I'm wearing the same clothes multiple days in a row. Uh, I, I may be, in fact, doing that, but I just assume you assume the best in me here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about some of the literature as we read it and uh, hopefully uh, gives you a little bit of a perspective. Again, it's not going to cover everything. I just want to give you a little bit of my thoughts over some of these short stories that I'm offering you over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Two Kinds by Amy Tan. If you haven't read it, pause the video right now, go read it. Uh, but I'm assuming if you're at the video now, uh, you've read it. Uh, this is my first read through this. I've read a little bit of Amy Tan before, but I had never read this short story. Uh, and so what you're getting now is my reactions after my first sit down read with it this morning. Uh, one of the things that struck me immediately is just, I know that I'm a parent, and so I'm reading this somewhat sympathetic to the perspective of the mother in this. Uh, and, and one of the first things I thought is, what perspective are you guys reading it from? Are you reading it and, and completely understanding the views of this daughter? Are you reading this and, and thinking about just how unfair the mother is? Uh, it, it definitely brought to me in mind... The idea that, that you bring a lot to a short story and it affects the perspective that you might sympathize with. Um, obviously, the huge part of this story is the complexity of the relationship. Uh, we love the word complex in this class, uh, and this relationship is complex. Uh, and so we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. Uh, I want to start at the start, which is at the beginning. Uh, I love this opening. I think the opening of this short story is is absolutely fantastic um, for, for one you get this picture of the mother and again it's complex this is a woman who has lost everything she has lost her mother her father her home her first husband her two daughters twin baby girls and yet she has this immense hope you get punched with that in the face right away. The difficulties have not beaten her down. She has seen a lot, and she is full of hope. The other thing you see right away is a complete clash of cultures. This is a woman who lost everything in China and now is coming to America, and because it's America, she has hope. But she's also coming over with all sorts of Chinese sensibilities and Chinese traditions and a Chinese way of life. Um, and so you know right away from the opening that that clash is going to matter. Third, you get time details immediately. First three words, my mother believed. Well, believed is past tense. Is the mother gone now? Or did she quit believing this? So we begin in past tense, and then the second sentence goes to future tense, talking about what is possible in America. The phrase, you could, gets repeated over and over. That's a very futuristic idea. This is what is possible in the future. So immediately we get a battle between past and future also in this, uh, and it begs us to ask some questions. And again, that's another thing for me that's um impressive about the beginning. There are so many questions to ask. Uh, clearly, we're going to deal with a flashback. How much time has passed? What is the battle between cultures? Um, what will the mother struggle with? Uh, why do these character details of the mother matter so much? Uh, so I, I do love the opening of this short story. Um, obviously, as I said, a huge thematic uh, piece of this is the complexity of this relationship. There's this huge battle of expectations between this, these two. Um, and that battle comes, I think, primarily because one of these two was born in America and the other was born in China. Um, the mother, ironically, though, has bigger expectations because of a more positive view of America. What America has done to this mother has made her believe that everything is possible for her daughter. 
that despite past heartbreak in the mother's life, despite the difficulties that existed in her time in China, moving to America means anything is possible through hard work. Well, the daughter flips this. To her, being in America means my will be done. I get to have autonomy. I want to just be me. I shouldn't have to listen to authority figures. You should just accept who I am and not want me to be more than that. So it's interesting that one, one of the person's views of America is what creates the conflict with the other person's because of the other person's view of America, their clash of cultures is so mixed uh, in that regard. Uh, now, the daughter, in many ways, has become Americanized in her self-confidence, perhaps unearned, in her desire to sit in front of the TV and be entertained rather than work, um, in her desire to just be herself and, and in her autonomy Whereas the mother, her becoming Americanized, well, that is the idea of this immortal American dream in a land full of hope. Um, now, for me, I read this, and, and as I said, my perspective as a parent means I read this, and, and one of the sharpest adjectives I would use for the daughter is, is immature. Um, she has a limited perspective. Um, she resents hard work. She resents the idea that her mother is telling her, you're going to be better at this. Um, she has self-confidence that is unearned. Uh, it's interesting. She, she writes about going to the recital and you know, feeling great. This is going to work out. Even though she admitted just paragraphs before, she really hadn't worked hard at all at this and, and hadn't taken it seriously and, and took advantage of the situation where she knew her, her teacher was not going to hold her accountable for mistakes because he couldn't. Uh, and so you see this movement uh, by the daughter. For me, uh, a major difference between the two characters, uh, not only in that the mother was born in China and lived there and the daughter hasn't, uh, the other for me is the mother knows loss. The mother knows tragedy. Um, and whether we want to call that maturity or not, she understands the reality of it, uh, whereas the daughter simply uses it as a weapon. Uh, she uses her mother's loss uh, in this huge climax uh, as a weapon. So the mother, she's seen hard times, but she has hope. Um, and ironically, the thing she has hope in is America, which is maybe the thing that has cost her this relationship with her daughter. The other thing that I, I immediately notice is that uh, just over and over and over again, how different these two are, but also how much their own emotions are dependent on what the other one is doing. The number of times the daughter has a specific emotional reaction because of what her mother is doing uh, is numerous, but it's the same on the other side as well. I mean, you read about the mother's reaction uh, to her daughter's performance, to her daughter's practice, to her daughter's approach to living, to her bro uh, daughter's success. Uh, so much emotional well-being for both of them is dependent on the other. Uh, and for two people who are clashing, that, that creates a dangerous and complex uh, situation. Uh, for me, it's also a, a bit of irony that the harder the mother tries to help her daughter be successful... Uh, the more resentful and angry the daughter is. Um, whether or not the mother is trying in appropriate ways, again, you have a different perspective than I do. Um, I, I have some sympathy for this woman. Uh, I can respect this idea of pushing her daughter uh, to be more. Uh, but obviously the daughter wasn't responding to it. it. It wasn't working, and so something else needed to be done. There's a couple of passages I wanted to discuss a little bit. Um, there was a great quote, uh, page three. Uh, I, I love the phrase, dutifully in my own way. Uh, she writes about two-thirds of the way down the page. Over the next year, I practice like this, dutifully in my own way. Man, how American is that? To be dutiful, to be committed, to being exactly this every day, and to be committed to what? to doing things my own way.
That is how she practiced, almost obstinately, my way. She, her duty, she says, was to herself and to her own way and to being her. Well, I just thought that was a great phrase, dutifully, in her own way. Uh, I also want to look at the climax, really, on pages four and five, uh, this battle. Uh, and so I'm after the space break on page four, and we read, I had assumed that my talent show fiasco meant that I would never have to play the piano again. But two days later, after school, my mother came out of the kitchen and saw me watching TV. Four o'clock, she reminded me, as if it were any other day.